Welcome to the channel guys, we are back again and today I'm going to be talking about my top 10 niche fragrances for fall, so stay tuned for that. If you like the content, hit that like and subscribe button, really do appreciate it. So this year I did decide to try and make a little bit of a different list, not super different, but I have discarded a lot of the fragrances that I would usually put on this list because I wanted to bring about or introduce you to new fragrances, some of them you've probably heard of, some of them you may not have, uh, but without any further ado, let's get into it. The first one, a fragrance I tried recently, and this is one that, of course, Big Beard Business has talked about a lot. This is where I've heard about this fragrance, so in that sense, it's not that new. Um, but I haven't recommended it before, and that is Chocolate Greedy by Montel. I'm tempted to say this is actually my favorite from Montel. Now, to be fair, I've probably only tried about five or six of their fragrances, uh, but this one, really do enjoy really nice uh, chocolatey not quite milky not quite dark kind of in the middle there it's not overly powdery which i find that sometimes co uh, cacao can be a little bit on the powdery side and this one doesn't come off to me to be particularly powdery um, it's nice and chocolatey there's a vanilla in there i believe that really gives it a nice um a nice sort of chocolate barry feel because it takes it away i think from being too powdery Really nice, uh, performs really well, and if you like chocolate, it's definitely a fragrance to try, and I think people who like chocolate will also like this one. So that's a really fantastic fragrance. Great, uh, good performance, so it lasts a long time. Uh, projection is quite good as well. And uh, I think if you find it on the gray market, you can get that one for probably under $100, probably even under $80, but I don't really know the current gray market price, but Montel's, can always be gotten for a good price. Next on the list, I may have brought this one up or suggested this one before, um, and it was uh, my scent of the day when I made a video about honey fragrances, and that's B by Zoologist. And honestly, I feel like this one has even just aged well. Uh, the more I've had it, the longer I've had it, the more I've worn it, and it's really, really well done um, honey fragrance. So. While it is at times very waxy, I have found, especially having worn it more and having uh, had it sit more, I feel like it's a little bit more syrupy as well over or has become over time. There is still that waxy um, aspect to it, but it's a really nicely done honey and light floral fragrance. So I wouldn't be afraid of this if you don't really like florals, but you like honey or you want something with honey in it uh, because it's not super floral, but performs really well. The projection on this one, very, very strong. I think this is very typical of uh, Zoologist fragrances. Lasts a very long time. So easily I'm getting into the 10 hour mark with this one, which is really fantastic. I also don't really go very heavy on this one, maybe three sprays. Um, you know, if I was gonna be outside in the cold, I might go. I might go more depending on the situation, but um, it's very strong projector, great longevity. Really enjoy this one. And the next one is one that I know some people do actually really love this fragrance. A lot of people actually hate it. I was very surprised with the hate that it got, and that is by Killian Dark Lord. And um, I know some other reviewers do like this one. I know a lot of them hate it. A lot of them called it, you know, dirty. They really just didn't like it. Um, and I don't really don't really get that. It is such a wonderful, beautiful vetiver scent. The vetiver in this is top quality. And if you like vetiver, you at least owe it to yourself to try it out because it might be right up your alley. Yes, there is leather in it. It's not that super prominent, super potent, at least for me uh, and my nose and my skin. I do find it can be a, a little bit leathery, uh, but actually the, le the vetiver is the star for my, me and my skin. Um, and it has nice undertones of leather. Very nice, uh, gentlemanly, long lasting, and strong fragrance. Um, if you wanted something that really has that aggressive leather, I would recommend instead trying Royal Leather by Killian because it's probably the most aggressive leather fragrance on the opening that I know of. Although, um, I've certainly gotten many positive comments from that one, to my surprise. Uh, but anyways, so that is the next, and that is Dark Lord. So next one on the list is going to be none other than Sweetie Aoud, which I tried out recently by Roja. Of course, this one is a little bit more expensive, even for niche fragrances, although I think you can find it again if you find somebody willing to part with it or whatever at a 
more reasonable price. This one often gets talked about as being a sort of like a, a macaron or a cookie, which I definitely kind of get that vibe in the beginning. But there is, so there is this nice sort of creamy cookie-like accord that's very present for a few hours, um, but it's also very, very woody. So I find a lot of fragrances where they're gourmand oud fragrances, like Mula Mula, for example. I don't really pick up any of the oud. Um, definitely not in, in Mula Mula. It's more of this sweet gourmandy fragrance, which is great. Uh, but in this one, I find that it really is a gourmandy oud fragrance. And it isn't skanky, it's not animalic. Uh, I, I really think oud gets a little bit more of a bad rap than it probably deserves. Very few uh, fragrances have that really skanky vibe to it, but some of course do. And um, it's nicely done. It is a very different kind of a wood smell because it is oud, but it's also a very luxurious uh, fragrance, which I think Roja does very well. A lot of his fragrances are very, very uh, luxurious. So that's a good one if you haven't tried it out. If you like gourmands, it's definitely worth a shot. Now, speaking of gourmands, I have another one, which I think has maybe been promoted to my favorite from the house. And that is Unknown Pleasures by Kerosene. So a lot of the time on this channel, I'd be talking about Blackmail. And don't get me wrong, Blackmail is a fantastic fragrance. I really do enjoy that one. It's a really nice sort of smoky, sweet, um, oud fragrance that is done really really well very great performer unknown pleasures is a really nice gourmand fragrance and it opens up kind of like a lemon biscuit or lemon cookie um, a little bit sweet and within the first hour or two hours um, that lemon really starts to die off and you get this really beautiful sort of sugar coated waffle cone vibe that is just fantastic and for those of you that do care um, I'm not a, I don't really care that much about getting compliments with my fragrances, uh, but this is my most complimented gourmand fragrance. So it is one that I think is also mass appealing. It is a people pleaser and it is definitely a little bit more unique. And as I always say with kerosene, you get really, really good value. So 100, 100 milliliters, and I think it's around 140 uh, US dollars for one of these. So I think that's good value, especially because they perform very well. They're good quality scents, and uh, I really enjoy them. So, kerosene, if you haven't checked out the house, you should get some samples, in my opinion. Get your nose on them, find out what you like, because good quality value, um, it's great. So, next, perhaps no surprise, this is one that should be no surprise if you're familiar with the channel, and that is going to be Viking by Creed. This one got a lot of hate when it got released, and I think people kind of compared it to Aventus, and in some respects fairly so, uh, because it looks a lot like a bottle of Aventus. Now, I had originally thought that this was the first male release since Aventus, and that was one of the reasons why it was compared so heavily, but I believe Royal Oud, somebody pointed out that Royal Oud was released after Aventus, and it's not or didn't get as much hate as Viking. Um, and so maybe it's just the bottle design that made it you know, get a lot of comparison to Aventus. But in either case, this is one that I really, really enjoy. It's a spicy barbershop style, more sort of more modern take on that barbershop fragrance. And it is just so well done. It's quite spicy. It has this mint that brings a nice sort of iciness to it and something they really wanted to portray, the Viking, the fiery uh, conquest, I guess, of the Vikings. And I think that's done really well. Also, it's a rose fragrance, so it's not super heavy on the rose, but in the dry down, the rose does start to come out, and it is a very nice masculine rose. So I can always appreciate when rose is done in a way that I like because I'm not really a rose fan. So if there is something that has a prominent rose that I that I enjoy, I always, you know, I, I take I take note and I, I appreciate that. So this one, if you want a very classy, mature, so I should say this is a little bit more of a mature fragrance, um, barbershop style fragrance, a little bit more modern, has a little rose in it. This is good to check out. I think a lot more people should in the future be giving this one a chance and I have seen a lot more people start to come to appreciate this one, which is great because I think it is one of their best offerings. So the next one is going to be none other than Wicked Good by Gallagher Fragrances. Now, I think this one got a little bit of mixed review when it came out and um, I know a lot of people talk about this one as being sort of a chocolate fragrance and I see that on the opening. So with Wicked Good, it's very prominent chocolate fragrance in the opening. It does have a very nice chocolate, uh, like a sort of cubes of chocolate or whatever kind of a vibe. 
But this quickly actually fades. And it's, for me, the chocolate vibe doesn't really last more than about an hour. So it quickly becomes much more of a vanilla heavy fragrance. And that is the star. It is supposed to be centered around Madagascar vanilla. And um, it does that really, really well. You get this very high quality vanilla that comes off slightly toasted um, with a nice sort of marshmallowy vibe. And that really that toasted aspect that it has just gives it a whole new dimension. It's really, really well done. Um, I don't know if it would be the next Gallagher that I buy, but it definitely would be on the list of candidates if I buy another Gallagher to pick that one up. Um, so I do enjoy it. And if you like vanilla fragrances, if you like a little bit of chocolate, it's worth checking out because you may also like it. It is one where vanilla is the star. And to me, um, you know, I like this fragrance more than Annie. I wasn't a huge fan of Annie. If I was gonna pin it, pick a superstar vanilla fragrance, Wicked Good would be on that list. Um, I would give Annie a, an, a, a sort of a um, an honorable mention because it is a very popular fragrance, but it just wasn't really for me. And the next one is a really good one from Genre, which is a clone house, but they do have some originals. And the fragrance in question is Apples and Aces. I did order a five mil decant, so I guess I didn't really want to pull the trigger on a bottle, especially because I have too many fragrances already. But uh, it is one that I certainly might pick up a bottle of in the future. And it is a really great fragrance. So just to give you an idea of how it opens up, there is this really nice, beautiful syrupy apple, uh, which does remind me a, a little bit of apple brandy, but it doesn't, honestly, it's definitely not an apple brandy clone. It has a, a tobacco note, which to me comes off a lot more like incense. So it's quite a bit smoky that starts to emerge and it definitely changes very quickly from something that really resembles to apple brandy to something totally different. Um, and it really becomes its own thing and it becomes a nice sort of fluffy, vanilla sweet um, fragrance. So it's also one that is very complex, one that changes over the course of the lifetime. So if you do like that kind of fragrance, it's one to check out and it is one I would recommend sampling, but I also say uh, sample first because it is as it is a little bit more of a complex fragrance it's not going to be one that everybody likes but it is a really good one and next on the list is none other than yes i did usually i don't try and have or i try not to have two of the same house on one list but this time i couldn't resist and i went for another really great one that i'm happy that i'm going to be wearing more very soon uh, and that is creation e or enigma parfum cologne now I do have a comparison video where I talk about Creation E, the Parfum Cologne, and I compare it with the Parfum. And in all honesty, they're so similar that I just could never see myself really buying uh, the Parfum. This one in the dry down smells a little bit better to me. There is a little bit more of that cola vibe in the opening for the Parfum, which I really do like. Um, and it is a heavier fragrance, so I think it is one that overall would overwhelm this fragrance um, if you put them side by side, especially on the dry down, but they smell virtually identical. The, the differences are so small, it is, it's actually hard for me to really put it into words and you can see that in my video, uh, but they're very similar. Um, I like this one a little bit more, especially on the dry down. It has this nice, almost like there's something about the tobacco and I think it's vanilla, it comes off almost a little bit chocolatey um which is really nice and it is one of those very gentlemanly classy high quality uh men's fragrances and i think if you want something that could easily be like a fall uh signature scent i think this is a good choice uh for candidate but if you like tobacco if you like uh, vanilla if you like it is a little bit boozy i find even the parfum is not that boozy especially in the opening um, but it's a good one to check out and I would recommend it. Next one and the last one, um, and I will mention, by the way, these are not in any particular order, is another one that I find to be quite original. I do really enjoy this one and I put a little bit of a dent in it um, and I am gonna be wearing it more this fall. Very potent, I'll be wearing it in the winter too. That's Saddle by Svensk. So you can see a little bit there where it's starting to wear. I, um, I usually only go two or three sprays of this one. That's one reason why it's gonna last a long time. Now this is leather and it's butterscotch. And so it does have that sort of sweet leather vibe that, you know, Tuscan leather or ombre leather 
brought about um, and other fragrance houses have definitely copied the raspberry leather. What I really appreciate about this is first of all, butterscotch, I, I don't see that very often as a note, but it is a different take on sort of that sweet leathery vibe. And it is a very um, luxurious, classy leather. It's supposed to represent basically a high quality saddle. Um, this leather that's used in that saddle and I guess riding horses and something that's important I think in Sweden or is part of the culture um, And this is Swedish I believe the brand and you can buy direct from their site and if the exchange rate is good It's cheaper than where else you can buy it. So you can buy it elsewhere I think crystal has it so it could be cheaper depending to buy it straight from their their site um, That's actually I believe what I did um, anyways Good leather butterscotch fragrance and worth checking out and one that I'm going to be wearing definitely when it's a little bit cooler in the fall. Anyways, guys, that is my list. Leave a comment down below. What are you looking forward to wearing? What is your favorite niche fragrance for the fall? And don't forget to like and subscribe and I'll see you guys in the next video.